What if you could measure your breathing, record your ventilation rate, and even record the amount of volume of air moving in and out of your lungs while you worked out? This is the time wear shirt. And while seeing your respiratory system work in real time is absolutely astonishing, the real trick is taking that data, graphing it over a workout or a ramp test, and then lab accurately calculating your precise training zones. Because having accurate training zones allows an athlete to train easier on easy days and to make better use of those hard efforts, but also to plan for longer race efforts with as much information as possible. In this video, we're gonna talk about what this shirt is, what the technology does, uh, why it might be helpful or useful for you, uh, I was also able to use this shirt to test two pro triathletes, which was actually really cool. So we'll talk about that. But I also want to talk about, you know, where this product is lacking so that you can better determine if it's a product that you might be interested in purchasing. Okay, let's start with the actual shirt itself. Uh, it's a nice performance tech shirt with you know, the kind of standard like three-way stretch fabric. Uh, it feels, you know, very much like a high-end athletic tank that you would buy for, you know, $50, $60 if you were to buy it somewhere like Nike.com or someplace like that. Uh, it doesn't have a swim, bike, run, rinse, repeat logo, uh, but it does have this kind of like X pattern on the back. Uh, it's kind of hard unless the light hits it just right. At the top of the back of the shirt is this little pod. The pod is just for communication and data storage. Uh, and the pod just kind of like pops off pretty easily. You're gonna wanna pop it off to actually wash the shirt. Washing it isn't like a big deal or anything. Uh, machine wash warm and then just hang to dry. Uh, I don't expect a ton of durability issues with the shirt itself, but I am being a little bit more careful with this than, you know, maybe like just a, like a standard tech shirt that I would maybe throw around a little bit more. And the smart shirt measures your breathing rate, your tidal volume and airflow. Uh, I think the biggest value proposition for using a shirt like this is using it to get those metrics, those uh, lab accurate definitions of your ventilatory threshold one and ventilatory threshold two spots. Uh, and you can get those metrics uh, to correlate with your heart rate while running or biking uh, or wattage while cycling or even like your pace while running. And you can think of your ventilatory threshold one it's kind of like that zone two effort where uh, your body is burning more fat than carbs. And then the ventilatory threshold two is where your body kind of switches over to, you know, much more carb burning uh, and your body becomes much more anaerobic. Now, the reason that this is, you know, so important and that, you know, most of the current research going on right now is showing that like endurance athletes can see huge benefits by spending a significant amount of time doing that kind of VT1 or you know zone two style training. And then you know maybe a moderate amount or a little bit less time in those higher efforts. But I would say, you know, over and over again, athletes they tend to do their easy days too hard, not really allowing for as much of those benefits to kind of uh, take place and those benefits are things like, you know, additional recovery for your body and then uh, ability for your body to actually burn and process fat better. Uh, but to take advantage of that kind of style of training, it is extremely helpful to know, you know, exactly what level of effort you need to exert to be, you know, in that green zone or, or zone two and what level of effort it takes to be up in those high red zones. And then it's also helpful just to know, you know, what level of effort isn't really as helpful, that kind of in-between phase. And I feel, you know, really lucky because not only was I able to test myself with this shirt, but we also used this shirt to test two pro triathletes. So let's take a look at just a little bit of data. The first thing we did was test a pro triathlete named Josh Monda. And you know, what I found most interesting about his test results was just his massive VT1 area, which you see on both the wattage as he's doing a bike ramp test, as well as his heart rate from that exact same ramp test. 
And we also tested Evan Price. Uh, you might remember Evan from that uh, video that we made talking about, you know, a day in the life of a pro triathlete. What I found most interesting about Evan's data was that his VT2 data was just like spot on with kind of where he wanted to race a half Ironman triathlon, which is kind of what you would expect. So uh, before he kind of spikes into the red zone, he knows to kind of push it right up to the limit, right around 300 watts for that kind of half Ironman distance effort. And then the last observation that I found really surprising while doing these tests uh, was just that you can kind of just throw this shirt on top of, you know, any other shirt or any other jersey, and it just kind of picks up all those respiratory details. Now, uh, both of these guys have also been doing some lactic acid training, some lactate testing to try to determine, you know, very similar data points. So for these guys to measure their, you know, amount of lactic acid that's being built up over a ramp test, you can actually kind of prick the earlobe and uh, use testing strips. Uh, you do this kind of periodically through um, a run or a cycling ramp test, and you can determine when your lactic acid levels go from like that maintainable, you know, two to three millimoles per liter uh, to crossing that lactic acid threshold where it starts to spike up towards 10. Now, what's striking to me about watching these guys try to do this testing uh, was just how much easier it is to just put a shirt on uh, and it, you're ending up with the same or, you know, many more data points in a much more easily repeatable testing protocol. And because the testing strips are so expensive and you know, going to a lab is even more expensive, uh, using a shirt like this, it just kind of starts to look like a much better solution. Uh, plus the fact that the application itself can track you know, how your VT1 or your VT2 is tracking over time. Uh, for these guys, you know, getting bigger and better and me maybe the other direction, uh, but you might see those numbers go up or you might see them kind of increase in range. So your VT1, you're able to actually increase the amount of time that you're staying in that fat burning aerobic state. Now the time wear shirt is set up as a, a subscription service. Uh, you actually get the shirt for free when you sign up for six months. Uh, but you could actually buy a second shirt if you wanted one. I, I probably don't feel like I need one, uh, but if you needed one, it would cost you an extra $100. Uh, signing up for a year will cost you $28 per month. So I would say, you know, not a cheap service by any means. Uh, they do have a 30 day trial period, which is actually pretty amazing because I do think that there's a lot of real value in, in you guys just kind of checking this thing out to see if the product is something that kind of, you know, fits in with your own personal training regiment. Now I have a ton of positive things to say about this product, uh, but the time wear shirt is definitely not perfect. Uh, the hardware, you know, it seems pretty solid to me. Uh, I have noticed that you really do need to make sure that the pod is charged up before tests. Um, I keep on having to kind of like plug it in to kind of get it to wake up. Uh, it does charge pretty fast, but I almost always tend to try to kind of like plug it in five to 10 minutes before using it for a workout or a threshold test. Uh, overall, everything, you know, in my experience kind of feels beta with the whole process. And not bad, it's just that, you know, everything isn't 100% polished. Uh, for example, you know, I noticed that after the first test, the first threshold test, results actually disappear from the app. Uh, it just means that it's being processed and then it pops back into the app about 24 hours later with all of those testing results. So, you know, the whole process is not instantaneous. Uh, your data is run through a program on their servers, and then each test is actually looked at by a technician to confirm those metabolic threshold numbers. And some of that, you know, might be fixed by the time that this video actually goes live. Uh, but I do think that you might find that this product is still very much, you know, a work in progress. And I don't mean that as like a knock on the company or anything like that. It's just that they're continuing to do a lot of software development. And it feels like there's a lot of, you know, like hand holding going on throughout the entire process. Also not a bad thing at all. 
Uh, but I would say don't expect everything to be, you know, completely automated. And sometimes, you know, I think that's a good thing. You know, for example, when you first get this product, you actually schedule a one-time onboarding call where they actually walk you through getting connected and getting set up. Uh, I personally didn't really have very much difficulty doing, you know, my first test. Uh, but I did notice a few, you know, odd inconsistencies. Uh, when I did my first ramp test, I was given the TimeWare Zwift workout to use in conjunction with the TimeWare app. So you just kind of start those at the same time and do your ramp test. Uh, but the mobile app in the Zwift workout just kind of quickly fell out of sync. They were just kind of incrementing at different levels or something. Uh, but I don't think it really mattered. Uh, you just kind of keep going ends up being fine and because the app only needs really a fit file to just map the ventilation rate to your heart rate or your power data or your running pace. But basically uh, you can give the app access to something like Garmin Connect so it has access to that .fit file. But basically uh, server side, they just need access to that .fit file to map it to your ventilation data. Now, one of my biggest concerns about the Time Wear shirt is that it's largely designed for those ventilatory threshold tests. But you know, as a monthly service, you do really want to kind of like maximize the value of a device like this. And doing those threshold tests about, you know, once every three or four weeks, it just kind of doesn't feel like enough frequency of usage. I would love to see a product like this uh, kind of help direct my training a little bit more. Um, I would love to see, you know, suggested workouts to do with the shirt, just so that I'm using the shirt more frequently. Uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not suggesting that the time wear shirt should try to be your coach. Uh, in a lot of ways, I would describe it, you know, just like a power meter. A power meter is not gonna try to be your coach. It's gonna report on the data on your workout and not tell you necessarily how to do your workout. But, you know, all of that being said, I'd still love to see, you know, some sort of additional feedback from the device itself after having used this for a bit, uh, you, you just kind of feel like you're left wanting to use the shirt more. Okay, so overall, is this a product that I'm suggesting to you? I would say, you know, I would say that it's complicated. Uh, in some ways, it's absolutely, you know, one of the most amazing products that I've ever tested on this channel. Uh, but in other ways, it still feels like it needs about, you know, six months or a year of additional development time to, you know, really be ready for prime time. And even then, I think that this product is going to be very niche. Uh, I would say that, you know, if you're at the point where you're, you know, pricking your ear during a ramp test, uh, during a workout to get those lactic acid levels, or, you know, if you're considering going to a lab to do some VO2 max type testing, yeah, I mean, a product like this is, is a no brainer. It's just like so much easier to use than, you know, anything else that's out there. Uh, but, you know, if you haven't taken care of all of the other kind of basic low hanging fruits, uh, tracking your weekly training loads or, you know, using basic tools like a power meter, uh, then no, I don't think that this is something that you might be interested in. Um, the good news, is that the time wear team is like very aware of who is a good fit for this product. Uh, so you could reach out to them and just ask them what they think. Um, they've also had very similar feedback to, you know, my experiences uh, from all the users that are using this, uh, wanting to use this shirt more frequently. And they're already kind of exploring more ways to make that happen. So I do think that it's going to be a very interesting company to follow over the next year or so. Uh, the technology, you know, obviously it's it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I just think it's a matter of continuing to develop for this group. Uh, if you want to learn more, I am going to leave some links in the description of this video. I definitely would encourage you to reach out to the Timeware team. Uh, I've found the group to be extremely responsive responsive uh, and just good people to talk to. Uh, either way, be sure to get out there, swim, bike, run, rinse, and then repeat it all over again. And we will see you guys on the next one.